Whenever possible, I like to play retro games with cartridges. With these old games, you have to make sure that they're clean. Cleaning with cotton swabs is annoying and it leaves a bunch of fuzz behind. But now things have changed with 1UP Card. 1UP Card cartridge cleaners have more surface area and leave no fuzz behind. They're fast and they're effective when it comes to cleaning retro games and consoles. They also have a mini 1UP Card for Game Boy games and console cleaners for classic systems like NES and N64. For a limited time, you can even get a collectible Cinemassacre 1UP Card. Go to the link in our description and get your 1UP Card today. All right, so we're going to try Turtles in Time and Hyperstone Heist. This was when Konami would release two different versions of the same game for Super Nintendo and Genesis. That was always a, a good conversation to, um, you know, debate which version is better. Um, and I think what we're doing right now is not necessarily determining which is better, but just to play them side by side just for the fun of it. Um, Mike is playing Hyperstone Heist, and I'm playing Turtles in Time. I and, guess we uh, should we point out that, you know, it was originally an arcade game, and that's yet another version of this. Also, Mike and I can see each other's screens, which is uh, a new feature that we're doing right now. All right, what turtle were you? Uh, I picked Michelangelo, I guess, because he was always my, always my favorite. All right, I'll be somebody else. I think Donatello is usually the best in the games because of the, the range of the bow, but... All right, I'm Raph. So I'm so everybody knows I'm playing uh, the Genesis Hyperstone Heist. Have we done a video on... Turtles in Time? So, um, one of the earliest episodes of James and Mike Mondays, uh, we did Turtles in Time, and we played through the game, and um, I remember having a funny conversation with you about um, Shredder sending, uh, the, sending the turtles back in time, and... Oh. Um, and like the, his whole reasoning for, for doing that. Yeah. Uh, oh, and he sends like Bebop and Rocksteady back in time too. Did he know in the first place that the tur turtles like, when they get to the end of a level in Turtles in Time, they like automatically like go to the next time period. Did he know it was gonna be like that? Because like, why did he also send the foot soldiers yeah, back, yeah. back in time? There, yeah, nothing about it makes sense. It's Did just we, weird. I just beat uh, Baxter Stockman. By oh, the okay, way. cool. Yeah, I'm just like in the middle of the sewers right now. I mean, these these games in general, you know, I, I kind of, I love them as a kid. I love Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles 2, the arcade game, as a kid. But now, I, whenever I play that game, I find it to be kind of repetitive. It's just like you're fighting foot soldiers over and over. And what was... What about the... Uh, you're right, yeah. But what about the, um, the arcade version of it? Um, have you played that in a while? I have. It's that's pretty similar. The graphics are nicer in the arcade, uh, as it would be. Some of the vo voices and sound effects and stuff are, are different. You know, it's about the same. It's like it's like it's like any beat 'em up. Um, but this one was a little more interesting because it added more characters. Like you could fight rock warriors and like th they just added more to it. And the graphics were nicer and the music was better. It was just like the superior you know version of it. I remember the first time playing Turtles in Time. Um, I was on a boardwalk in New Jersey, and when I saw it, I, it blew my mind the first time I saw it. Oh, wow, okay. So, so you said boardwalks. So you're talking the arcade. The arcade game, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. Uh, def definitely the first arcade game uh, blew my mind the first time I saw it, because it, the animation looked like the, the cartoon, and um, you, don't, you didn't usually see video games that resembled the, the source uh, so well. Right. The only thing after that was trying to get it into the home. And when uh, Turtles 2, the arcade game, came out on NES, it was uh, it, it was basically at that time, it was awesome just because it was the closest you were gonna get. Right. But now you look back at that one and it's really nothing special. Um, but when, when Turtles in Time came out um, on Super Nintendo, um, it was like that. I think that was the first time it felt like, for me, it, it felt like getting an arcade game in your house. The one that was truly special on the consoles, honestly, was the Konami, uh, you know, the, the first TMNT game because like they did something totally original with it. It wasn't just a port of an arcade game. Hey, do you know that our our levels look similar now? I'm, I'm fighting Metalhead or uh, Mecha Turtle, whatever he is. I forget. You know, um, I always found it weird that. The Manhattan Project was just its own game, so it would be interesting to see an arcade-style version of that. Like if they just revamped the graphics and made it like if this were the arcade. Um, wait, what do you mean exactly? Um, kind of like how you know the um, Ma Manhattan Project had no arcade counterpart. Yeah. It was yeah. just a you know unique game. Yes. So 
if they made an arcade version of that with better oh, graphics. Oh, I see what you mean. And without all the lag and everything, uh, that would be kind of cool. That'd be a, a neat experiment. Oh, did did the um, did the Manhattan Project have a bunch of lag? It did, yeah. If, especially if you're playing two players and there's a lot of foot soldiers and stuff, it would get like you, you, you know, know what? NES... So um, so I just did that level, but it didn't have me fight. Um, what is it, his name? Metalhead. I, I actually like just did a little bit of that uh, street, and now I'm back in the sewers again. So this is a lot different. That's weird. So there's no boss or what? There was no bo there was no boss, and then it like I got further, and then there was like an open sewer, and it sent me down the sewer, and then now I'm back in the sewers like once again, and there was no boss yet. I'm fighting the uh, the yellow xenomorphs right now. Yeah, from the, one of the episodes. Yeah. Yeah, the uh, invasion of the pizza snatchers, I think. There, so there's a really cool fan game. I just want to throw this out there. You know how like you and I watch like every single episode of the series like, like obsessively. When we were doing that, and you know we were all into like oh Vern and Irma, Irma and Vernon and Burn Thompson and like yeah all the like the sort of the the minor characters that you don't see like in you know in in these games like you know Irma's not in Turtles in Time. You know fans made this game that like takes all of the things that you'd ever want to actually see in, in Ninja Turtles that is not in the games. And like, so what you're telling me it. is that Irma and Vern and all, all of them are in this game? Yeah, and you, you can play as Vern Thompson. <laughs> you can play as all of them. You can play as Vernon. Oh, do they fight? Yeah, you can like play as them. So, so they fight like foot soldiers and stuff? No, like you are like Burn Thompson, like like as like right now you're Michelangelo, like you can yeah, play yeah. as like Vernon but, and stuff. You know what's funny? They suck really badly. <laughs> I, I would imagine it's kind of like if you pick Mickey in um in the Rocky game. Oh when yeah, you play as his trainer. Um, like he, like they should but, suck. So I finally made it to a boss, and it's Leatherhead. But I'm fighting him in the sewer, and in Turtles in Time, you fight Leatherhead. Uh, is it on the train? Hey, I'm, I'm almost about to beat the game because I'm in the Technodrome. No. <laughs> <laughs> did, did you ever think that as a kid? Yeah, I, I remember thinking, I was like, oh my god, I'm on the Technodrome already? And then it's almost like you feel like, oh, that stinks. It's it's such a short game. And then you realize, oh, it's only the beginning. I, I think I might have been tricked, uh, if memory serves me correct, uh, in the arcade. I saw somebody playing the Technodrome thinking that, like, you know how, you know, in the arcade, whenever someone's at the end and, and uh, everybody gathers around to watch, you know, the last part. Right. Like, I remember I remember watching somebody beat X-Men one time. Well, then, like, you know, he beat Shredder or whatever, and then he goes into the portal, and then it's, you know, you go back in time, and then you're like, whoa, like, this, the game's still going. It, it was crazy. Yeah, it's it's so cool when they go back in time. And I'm, I'm curious, so Hyperstone Heist, I guess... I don't even know if this is gonna because I don't remember I haven't played this game in a really long time So I don't remember If they're even gonna go back in time. I don't think they do No, I, I think it's about um, I mean, I, I really don't know. I guess that's why we're doing this just to kind of uh, You know refresh in our memories because I didn't have this game growing up Obviously. Yeah. I, yeah, me neither like I, I could tell you all about turtles in time I mean even that I'm s sort of forgetting a little but Hyperstone Heist, I didn't play until m much later. You know, I've, I've heard people say they like Hyperstone Heist better, and I've heard people say Turtles in Time. I think it just depends which one you played first. Like, that seems to be the case a lot of times. It's weird. This game, like, tricks you because it makes you think that it's going to be, like, the arcade game, but it's really, like, very different. I don't know. It's just weird. It's just very strange. Um, did you ever wonder? I I'm sure there's probably a reason why Konami made two versions of the games when they ported them, or, or not even necessarily ported them, but like, you know, even Castlevania 4, uh, you know, had bloodlines on Genesis. Like, why not just have the same game? Yeah, I mean, it's cool. It's cool that they did that. Like, uh, Contra, there's another one. Contra 3 and then Contra Hardcore. Maybe Genesis um, wanted to differentiate itself from Nintendo and be like, hey, we got our own versions. But it, but it was uh, specifically Konami that did that. Uh, whenever it was another company, it would usually be, you know, pretty much the same game. Right, that's true. It seemed like Konami had just a different strategy, where maybe the idea was... And again, I'm sure there's a reason if we looked it up, but um, I bet maybe it had something to do with, like, they figured, you know, hey, we, we might be able to sell two versions of the game. Like, people... Because if you own a Super Nintendo, you're not going to want to also play the Genesis one if it's the same game. Like, you're not going to care. But if they made it different, it might give people a reason to like get 
both versions. Konami was also maybe a big enough uh, developer that they were able to do that, where some of the other developers might not have been able to make two versions of the same same game. Maybe. Also, I guess Konami also probably really cared back then, as opposed to now. <laughs> I don't even think there's a single Castlevania game that exists on more than one console. Like it, it was always a unique game. Like they never, they never double, double dipped or, or whatever. Well, um, well, Rondo of Blood on PC Engine and then the Super Nintendo one is. They're, those are pretty similar. They're not oh, exactly. They're not exactly the same, but. You, you're, are you talking about Castlevania Dracula X? I am. Okay, they're pretty similar. I be I believe so. I mean, they're they're definitely not like exactly the same. I I yeah, I guess so. Um, I I always heard that uh, Castlevania Dracula X was a little bit of like a sort of a, basically a watered down version of Rondo of Blood. Some people like um the uh Dracula X one more. I mean, I personally like the PC Engine CD one more, the one we played. Yeah, and by the way, you know how we were talking about like the Nintendo Switch and how like certain games like Batman and Ninja Turtles is not gonna be on like the Nintendo Switch store because of like licensing? That's like, that's like obvious. Like licensing is obviously the reason because they're not, they don't want to pay for like the license of Batman to have like that game in like the, for the NES like store. Like we, we get the reason, but like the, the point of that conversation Batman was a game on on NES, and it's like maybe maybe somebody will sell it separately, like like Final Fight or something. They have a collection with the Capcom games, so really like on the Nintendo Switch, they want you to buy these games separately. That's how you're gonna play Final Fight because they want you to buy it separately. But like the the point was that it's like yeah, but those games were on Super Nintendo, and they should be. Like if Nintendo is going to be putting all those games like in the in the Super Nintendo and NES section, it's like that the, those are never going to be complete. It's like obviously we we get that it's like yeah, licensing money money's why, but it it still sucks that those games aren't available. Did that even cost anything actually? Was it a free app on there? E well, you have to buy the Nintendo online like service. Oh, okay, but but so if you have Nintendo Online, then you can get because I forgot if I paid anything for it. Yeah, so I was just gonna say like, if if it's not like like an additional charge, at, at least it's like like you can't complain too much, I guess. But that's true. But it would be nice if they had uh, more. I would even pay for um, like if you if you said hey, you can get every or at least every major Nintendo game uh, on Switch. Like, I would pay for that, for sure. So I'm in a cave right now, and it looks kind of like the cave that's in the prehistoric times level in, on the Super Nintendo game. This game is very different uh, than the Super Nintendo game. Like, I know the Super Nintendo one very well, and it's uh, this is surprisingly uh, different than that. So there's definitely a lot of things that do match up, but then a lot of it doesn't. It's it's just a very different game. It's This is good, though. Like, I'm enjoying this. Yeah, yeah, me too. These are the type of games where, yeah, it's always good when you're playing with somebody, uh, which is what we're doing now. It's very different, but it's still uh, cool. Because th these are the games where you just, uh, it's better when you're having a conversation while you're playing them. Yeah, and just so you know, like, we, we're obviously, we're playing this on, I'm playing this on a real Sega Genesis. James is playing this right now on, on his real uh, Super Nintendo. Because yeah, it's actually I, a, a, an NT, but it's still... Uh, a cartridge. I'm going on the pirate ship right now. Okay. Yeah, so I already did a level that was kind of like a pirate ship, but it definitely was like way different than the one that's in that game that you're playing. But this is like, you know, in this game you're, I guess, not going back in time, so it's it's just like a cave in this game. <laughs> There's actually no dinosaurs. I'm just fighting foot soldiers. Yeah, it seems like there's not much that really indicates... Oh, here's the Rocksteady. So speaking of speaking of Ninja Turtles, I I just beat the NES game, uh, the first game w with uh, Michelangelo only yesterday. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. You've always been really good at that uh, first game. Like I, I never was. Yeah, I always just found that game like, just too frustrating. Like I'm I'm not having fun when I'm playing it. I'm just getting mad all the time. I remember when we did that the cartoon uh, series review. Yeah, I think that that was the last. What was the only time actually of watching every episode from start to finish? Right. I remember it went. I went through the same phases as I did when I was a kid because by the time it got to season four, that was when I started to get tired of it. Yeah. 
like by season five, I wasn't even watching it anymore. It's just too much. Um, it's too many fucking episodes. Yeah. It goes on way like, way too long. But it was cool to finally see them all. I think they they just kept it going really because it's like they were selling toys like crazy back then. So yeah. it's like they could keep coming out with episodes and then keep coming out with new toys for like new like Ray Filet or whatever the fuck you know. Because I think you know they made their money off of or yeah Ray Stingray or whatever his name. Um, they made their money off of the toys, so it's like the more episodes they made, the more toys they could make. Just beat Bebop and Rocksteady on the pirate ship. Yeah, I'm fighting. So in this, uh, Rocksteady is like his own fight, and it's not. He's not in 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 Turtles in Time. They're in like pirate gear, like they they're dressed up like pirates. This is just like he looks like normal. So it looks like I'm gonna fight Leatherhead now on the train. Yeah, it's just very mixed up. That kind of made sense, though. They put him in the sewers for a Hyperstone heist. Yeah, well, you fight the Rat King in the sewers in Turtles in Time. I guess bo both of their lairs were the sewers, weren't they? Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess, yeah. Why would he be in the, on a train, like Leatherhead? That's just weird, yeah. actually. Also, like, you know how you can throw guys, like, into the screen? I don't know if you can do that in this. Oh, in Hyperstone Ice? Oh, that sucks. Well, that, that's a big point for Super Nintendo. <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe you can. I'm just, like, I haven't seen it happen yeah. at all. I wish I could remember more of it. I have beaten Hyperstone Heist before, but my overall impression was always that Hyperstone Heist is a little bit uh, boring. Because I, I always felt Turtles in Time, you, you know, you go, you, you time travel, and then you go into the future, and it's like, there's just more cool things in it. Turtles in Time made it, that's what made it interesting because you go to all the different time periods. So you're like, oh, I wonder what time period is going to be next. That like, you know, mm -hmm. what, what will, you know, Bebop and Rocksteady be dressed up as and like, you know, there's just, it was, it was just interesting. You know, you're going to see dinosaurs and you're going to see, you know, UFOs and stuff. Yeah. I'm going to know what might be my favorite stage is the F-Zero stage. Oh my gosh, it's the year 2020. I never knew that. Oh. Uh, Neon Knight Riders is 2020. There you go. So well, I'm now, playing... now I'm glad we're doing this. <laughs> this is my first time playing this stage in the year 2020. <laughs> I'm glad that we did this in 2020. Yeah. <laughs> so there's another uh, future date that we made it to. And I suppose we don't have flying, uh, we're not um, flying around on a little like UFO rolling rocker things. Flying, flying cookies or whatever those are. All right, I just died, so I'm picking another turtle now. I'll be Donatello. I'm only on scene three. I'm not like that. I'm not that far. I think I have a feeling this game might be longer than the SNES one. I always felt, I mean, if memory serves me correct, that it was shorter, but um, that it, ha it had less levels. But the levels might take a little longer. Maybe that's it. Uh, yeah, I think the sure. levels just take forever. And now I had to, now I have to start this level from the beginning. So you know what I always found weird about uh, this Neon Knight Rider stage is that um, whenever there's like a, a jump, like there's a, like a pit, you don't you don't have to jump over it. It kind of goes with um, you know the the theme of the original game. You can just hover over it. Like I always thought, like, well, why is there a gap in the road if you don't have to jump? It's just weird. It's almost like they forgot to program it. Well, I mean, those things are flying anyway, though. Like, you think... The, yeah, I know, the, that's the, right. The but why, why is there a gap? But why is there a gap in the road? Yeah, I think you're going to beat the game before I'm even, like, through level three. I mean, without having played Hyperstone Heist in a while, you know, I have played it all the way through, but it's been a long time. I feel like I can't really give a fair opinion, but I, I, I feel pretty confidently that I'm getting the better deal of today you know i think i think you are actually <laughs> it's nice to be able to see this because i've played this less so i i'm it's an it's interesting but it's definitely reminding me that it's like oh yeah the super nintendo one's better yeah and that's how i always felt i always felt like well what's why would you want to play hyperstone heist if you could play turtles in time but you know everybody has their their preference now later in this game if i even get to it like there might be cool things but even if there's like really cool shit like later in the game, it's like well, it's already kind of ruined by not having the, not having like all the moves that the Super Nintendo one has, and I don't know, just the idea that it's like not. I mean, it's a it's a different game, but it's just like it's not as interesting. So I'm in the year 2100 now. I like that that um they didn't just make one generic future. They advance you 
even further into the future. So th they made up like, okay, well, that's going to be futuristic. But now this, this is going to be like, holy shit. Now this is really futuristic. I, I feel like, you know, a lot of times you did a video where you compared SNES and Genesis and you declared, I think by the end of it, you declared the Super Nintendo like the winner. Um, I do yeah. want to say, though, like, honestly, like lately, I've been playing a lot more Genesis stuff. Genesis yeah. has a lot more uh, shmups and like shooters and stuff than the yeah. Super Nintendo had, and it's it, Genesis is if you like shooters and, and shmups, Genesis is way better. Oh, okay. There's a there's a couple good so, good games like on Super Nintendo like uh, Space Mega Force, but like okay. overall, well, what like, about like uh, Genesis is way Gradiate. better. Okay, but well, what about like Gradius and um, wait, Gradius three and uh, R type? Yeah, those those are good. Like, uh, Gradi Gradius three is, is good on Super Nintendo. That's a, that's another good one. And R type, R type on Super Nintendo has like a lot of slowdown, but it's still it's still a really good game. Like those those are big title names like Gradius yeah. and R type, you know, and Life Force. Those are the first names that are gonna come out up when people mention like shooters. But there's like a lot of shooters that are like more obscure. Okay. Uh, that are like really good. But really good ones. Yeah, there's like it has like uh like like Thunder Force and like Lightning Force and Musha and like just just a, like a ton of, of games. And it, I just think it, Genesis is a way stronger console as far as those kind of games go. Because I feel like here because here, here we are once again being like oh well the Super Nintendo version's better than the Genesis. It, I just wanted to point out yeah. that that's not always the case. And, and honestly, no, a lot of times isn't. Genesis can be better. Oh, absolutely. In fact, if you wanted to do one where I think, um, I think, you know, I'm not positive, but I, uh, if I remember correctly, uh, Batman and Robin on both of them, uh, if you play the, uh, the Genesis version, it's like, it's like amazing. Like it's, it, the, the, like the graphics are better and stuff like that. But, but it's been a long time, so I forget. So, okay. So the bat, you're talking about Batman, the animated series and, um, I think like, both games are, pr are are pretty good, actually. Uh, the, honestly, the graphics in both of them are, are really good as far as far as graphics go. The Sega Genesis game is notoriously hard. It's one of the hardest oh, Sega yeah. Genesis games. I would say that the Super Nintendo one is a bit more uh, fair, a bit more fair, a bit more playable. Um, so honestly, I'd probably give that one to Super Nintendo too. Oh, would you? Okay. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I really like the, the Genesis game, but you have to be like a hardcore masochist to play the fucking Genesis Batman. Yeah, now you have now you about, just have uh, me on the subject of thinking about what Genesis yeah. games are better than Super Nintendo. Well, here's one. How about what do you think of Contra Three and Hardcores? I would rather play the Genesis uh, Contra than the Super Nintendo one. What about you? I mean, I think Contra 3 for me. The, the only thing I don't like about Contra 3 is those overhead stages. Yeah, I was just going to say that. I don't. I never liked yeah. that. Yeah. Like, the rest of the game is awesome. And I've beaten um, the Super Nintendo game on the hardest setting. So, like, I've played it a lot. So I can. I feel like I can make a pretty fair judgment on how I feel about that. Uh, I think, And the Genesis one has all the different characters you can play as. And different, like, oh, roots and stuff. Oh, like the wolf guy? <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. I think that's a lot better. I'm not saying that I don't like the Super Nintendo one. I do. It's a great fucking game. But I, I, I like the Genesis one. Speaking of, speaking of Contra, I've just played last night a Contra game that I had never played before in my life. There was a Contra arcade game that came out in 2011 called Contra Evolution, and it's a remake of the original Contra on NES, and it's not very good. So don't so don't feel like you're missing out on anything. But okay, <laughs> yeah. I just like to play everything that's Contra. Boy, I'm, I might actually die here. <laughs> I think I'm fighting the guy from the movie. Not Shredder, but you know the other guy, in, the bad oh. guy? Oh, Tatsu? I think, I think I'm fighting him right now. Really? I mean, maybe it's somebody else, but it looks like him. Oh boy, I, that sucks. Now I gotta do that whole level over again. Well, that's kind of good well, that you have know. to do that over again, because I had to do a whole level over again, so maybe that'll catch us up with each other. I'll be Donatello this time. So, hey James, give me your order of Ninja Turtles of your mo of your most favorite to your least favorite. Well, Mike and Raph were at the top for sure. I mean, Raph is funny because he's an asshole, uh, but Mike is the party dude. He's the one you want to hang out with. So M Michelangelo has always been my favorite. Raphael okay. second, and then third, third and fourth are Donatello and Leonardo. Like they're they're pretty close, but I, I think Donatello would be third. Um, uh, but then Leonardo's fourth because I don't know he just doesn't have a, as much interesting personality traits. Right. There's really no other reason than just the rest of them all have like a deal. 
Like, you know, Michelangelo's a party dude, Raphael's the asshole, Donatello's the nerd, and then Leonardo is just Leonardo. Well, Leonardo is the leader, is what they. Yeah, but what does that mean? It doesn't really mean anything. Well, it, you know what it, it what it means though. It means that he has more responsibility than the other. So, he, he, like he he's the one who's responsible to to look after the others. So in that way, he's kind of interesting. But um, like. I guess I guess at some point like Splinter must have been like hey like when you're out there because Splinter doesn't come out with yeah. them on, on their missions and stuff. No. So he so he's like listen like somebody has to like maybe be the be the one like if there's a situation where they have to like call call a shot like le like it's up to Leonardo to be like call the final shot kind of stuff. And, exactly. Yeah. Um, so I mean he's he's a little bit interesting, but I, I but I mean I I feel the same way as you. I think Donatello is much more interesting because he can you know he's like the Egon of the group. Like he's always the one uh, fixing the gadgets and inventing shit, and you know that's like I mean he's the one who pretty much. Uh, fixed up the turtle van with all the mm -hmm. gear and everything. He made the turtle blimp and all that stuff. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, I, so right now I am fighting a purple version of Leatherhead. A, a purple version of Leatherhead? Boy, I don't remember that one. Yeah, it's fucking weird. This game is all over the place. Yeah. And why are they making it so that I'm fighting Leatherhead twice? That's cheap. That is weird, yeah. Now I definitely don't like this game <laughs> as much. They're, they're recycling bosses now and just changing the fucking colors. That's stupid. Well, also, this level most... is recycled too, because I'm in that fucking cave again from earlier. What do you think's the most underrated character? That's not a, a turtle, like one that's um, it could be anybody. It could be a, a, a an ally. It could be a villain. Ace Duck. Ace Duck. <laughs> I I always felt uh Mondo Gecko. I, I always liked Mondo Gecko for some reason. Yeah, I don't know. Uh, fucking Napoleon Bonafrog. Oh yeah. You remember those guys? Are there... Yeah, I do. Um, do you remember? Um, so, th so there's Slash and there's uh, Mecha Turtle. Are there any other um, evil turtle characters? Oh, Probably. Toka, I guess. Um, Toka, but that. I'm trying to think. Because um, I was wondering if you could find four of them, then you could have like the four. Like if those four would team up, then that that would be like the um, the four evil Ninja Turtles. Right. There might there might be uh, off the top of my head. I don't know. I, I would imagine there probably is other evil turtles, but I, I'm not sure. They pro I, I bet they already did that idea. It's yeah. Probably like yeah. one of the comics or you know. Oh, apparently they recently did a Ninja Turtles versus Batman like animated thing, which I haven't oh, watched. But I saw that actually. Yeah, it's really good. Oh shit. Uh, yeah. I mean, just good. just to imagine, uh, yeah, just to see Batman fighting the Shredder, it's really cool. Oh shit! Batman fights Shredder. Yeah. Oh, now I gotta watch it. And it and it's done really well too. It's like if you would have seen that as a kid, it would have blown your mind because you know back then everything was so separate. Like there there yeah. wasn't all these like crossovers and stuff. Yeah, like right now, like there's a, there's a fighting game called Injustice, and um, it's mostly like you know uh, Batman and Superman, and it's like, it's like a DC fighting game. But actually, they just made it so that uh, or you know a while ago, I guess uh, the, the Ninja Turtles are in are in that game so you can fight as like leonardo versus superman you know like you're saying like everything that, that's what they do now everything's like crossed over and mixed up because people yeah. like that it seems like they do it usually in like um it's either a direct to video or it's a like a tv special or um a, a comic they do it a lot in comics but they don't do it in movies that often like like uh live action features i mean the last big one i remember is freddy versus jason well there was Even batman Bat versus superman i guess but i guess that the, well that's not really <laughs> yeah, yeah and that took like geez i mean they always take a long time too like uh, freddy versus jason they did the cliffhanger at the end of uh jason goes to hell and then it yeah. took like what like 13 years or something for it to happen and then then um the one you just mentioned, uh, Batman vs. Superman, they were talking about that in the 90s. And it's like, for some reason, these things, even though people want them, it just takes so long for it to happen. Uh, okay, so now, I'm, I'm, I think, by the way, now I'm finding a yellow version of Rocksteady. So it's like, I'm in a, I'm in like a boss rush of like the bosses I've already fought, but they're all different colors. It's really stupid. That's a cool term. I never heard that. A boss crush? No, a boss rush boss rush okay yeah that's yeah, I, like I never a that. boss rush is like um it, you know in Mega Man at the end when you fight all the all the robot masters again you know Gradius has a boss rush. yeah I, 
I just never heard a term for it, so that's cool. Oh, uh, okay. I always used to call it um an endurance round. That's another good way to, you know, put it. I'm in, I'm in 1992 again. It's a super shredder. But I mean, I I, I, I think you know people get the idea. They're be- they're very different games. The super shredders from Team NT2. That was a really awesome scene. As a kid, the the super shredder was um like one of those moments where it was like almost scary. It was like holy shit. Like, you never really get a good look at them because they're under that dock and it's dark. And right. he's just, like, smashing through all the wood and everything. I thought that was so cool. And he's like a villain that you only see for a bit. Um, I always felt like in, in Turtles 3, which was, you know, of course, it's something I mentioned in the video, was why didn't, why didn't Super Shredder ever come back? I just was. I just remember seeing those as a kid and just continually being disappointed because I wanted to see the fucking Technodrome and Krang and Bebop and Rocksteady, and it just didn't oh, have well, any of that. There, there was that. Yeah, I mean they 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 totally missed you know that opportunity. Oh, oh, and guess what? Now I'm fighting the what is the guy's name from the movie? In the first movie, uh, Tatsu. Yeah, him. So I'm fighting him again, and now he's a different color. So that's what they decided to do, is, like, they do a boss rush and then change the colors on all, on all the guys. It's really dumb. Because it, you know how it makes me feel? It makes me feel like I'm missing out on, like, more characters. Like, where's, like, Rat King and... Oh, my God, you know what? It says his name. It is Tatsu. Okay. <laughs> I wasn't sure, yeah, but, you yeah. Know, there, there's a great quote by Tatsu that I use all the time now, is, um... Uh, he, he goes... Go! Mm, play! I always say that to my kids now. I'm like, go! Play! I've heard you say that. <laughs> yeah. So there you go. Once again, I guess the enti- that entire fight when I was like trying to figure out if it was Tatsu, it said it said his name on screen. So there's another good example of me not reading what's what's on the screen. Oh, okay. <laughs> I did eventually, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It only took me ten minutes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, but, you, but the comments, that'll happen in one second, though. Oh, my God, yeah. Well, when you have a mi- like a million people fucking yeah. watching a video, obviously people are gonna notice that you know, I'm one person. And I'm yeah. gonna notice everything. It's easier to look at that stuff when you're not playing it. Yeah, like that too. Because watching... I'm looking at the character right now. I'm, like, yeah, I'm exactly. fighting. You're busy playing the game, but somebody else looking at the screen, they're obviously gonna, their eyes are more free to like just look around and. You know, they'll notice it, of course. They could even pause it if they want. There you go. See, guys, James is standing up for me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I know what you're saying, because you've done that too, right? Oh, yeah. I mean, it happens all the time, yeah. I'm actually having a... Oh, well, I'm getting a little better. I kind of forgot the strategy on Super Shredder here. Yeah, he can be tough, actually. All right, I'm so I... am starting to get the hang of it. I killed Tatsu, and now... Oh, it's Baxter Stockman. But he's not a bug. It's like when he's in his rocket ship thing. I don't know. I think it's really stupid that they have you fight the same guys over again. Yeah, especially when they have so many characters. And these games can already be redundant to begin with. The last yeah. thing you want to do is refight the same fucking bosses over again. That right there, man, this is definitely not... I don't care what anybody says, this is definitely not as good. You don't, in Turtles in Time on Super Nintendo, you don't refight the same bosses ever. No, not at all. There's none of that bullshit. Even when they had the opportunity, they could have had, like, okay, you fight Bebop and Rocksteady, but then on the pirate ship, you fight the pirate version of them or something. But no, they only put everybody in, you know, in there one time. Ex- exactly. Is, yeah. Yeah, so you're not, you're oh. not missing out. <laughs> Actually, I'm gonna... There we go, I got him. Boom! I see the ending of the game there, Splinter. Yeah, very impressive for such young students. I'm sure we talked about it um, the last time, but it's worth bringing it up again, is that the, the music at the end is um, uh, Turtle Power from the Ninja Turtles coming out of their shell album. <laughs> um, so, you know what? Oh, wait a minute. Wait, did I not get... Is there like a real ending to get here? Uh, maybe you're supposed to beat it on hard or something. Hang on. Oh, shit, no. What's wrong? You beat the game. I did? Yeah. Okay, I'm not... Well, it, it just it just said game over uh, normal, so maybe I was supposed to... Be well, it's based, It's like on an arcade game. They're just saying, like, that's the end of the game. But, and they, they're, they're... but I think there's an ending. But isn't there an ending when they're all in the blimp? So Mike's working on the end of his game, and I just want to say I looked up uh, footage just to confirm. Uh, it is true. At the end of the Super Nintendo game, there is an ending that apparently you only get if you beat the game on hard. So I dropped the ball there. I should have set it on hard. 
Um, so at the end, you see them return the Statue of Liberty, and then um, the turtles are up in the blimp, and as the credits play, it, it plays Turtle Power, uh, an instrumental theme of the, the song from the Coming Out of the Shells album. In the arcade, though, the arcade blows it all out of the water yeah. because the arcade actually begins with Turtle Power, and it has the vocals also, so it sounds just like the album. And then they do it again at the end as an instrumental. But another thing I noticed about the arcade that is a lot better is that April O'Neil is that April O'Neil actually talks. So they have all the voices, but it is the arcade. So uh, what do you expect? So one thing I want to say one more thing about the, the gameplay. Um, so if you hit both buttons together in, in this uh, in, in the Genesis version, you can do like a kick. But it, it, it's one of those things that it takes your energy away. In fact, I want to do it one more time just to confirm that. But d don't you hate that in, in games when you have like a special move and it takes your energy away? Yeah, always. I always hate that. So I'm going to do it right now. Let me double check it. Yeah. So it takes two life bars away. So like, fu like basically, um, I wasn't using it a lot like during like playing, but it's like I'm not using it a lot because it's like I don't want my life taken away from me. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where it's like, I understand that if you were able to just do it all the time, it would um, it would be too easy. But if it takes your energy, what's the point of it? Yeah. I mean, I guess it's it's sort of like if you're getting your ass kicked anyway and like people are crowding on you, it's like a way to just get yourself out of trouble. Where you're you're supposed to use it sparingly, like if you, if you can, but it's like, but yeah. I don't know, it just sucks. So I, I'm, I'm done. I think we're I'm done here. I don't want to play it anymore. Is it just get, oh, it's getting tiresome or, or what? Yeah, I mean, well, you're done with your game, so it's like, I think we said enough. Well, it'd be cool seeing the final video. I'll, be, I'll try to, you know, skim through it and see uh, it, any um, comparisons that we make. Right. I guess you just... I mean, I have beaten both games, just a reminder, but I have beaten both before. It's just, I, it's been a long time and, and I'm much more familiar with Turtles in Time. Yeah, I mean, that's it. That's pretty much it. I just, I just feel like... I can say confidently that I, I prefer Turtles in Time, um, by far. But I, I it, it has been a long time since I've seen Hyperstone Heist.